Hi, my name is Hosna, and today we are going to be setting up Umami, which is an open source alternative to Google Analytics. If you want an easy to use web application where you can see all the activity throughout all your websites, then Umami is just for you. We're going to be going through the documentation, deploying it through Railway, as well as setting up our dashboard and adding websites so we could get started on seeing the activity throughout all our websites. So let's get started. The first place we're going to go to is we're going to go to Umami's website. Then we are going to be going to Docs. Then if you go down and if you go to Guides, we are going to be going to the Running on Railway guide. We are going to be following the Running on Railway from a forked repo. Now the first step we are going to be doing is we are going to fork the Umami repository. So if we open it up, it should take us to Umami's repository. Then we are going to click Fork. In my instance, I've already forked the repo, so for you, you should be redirected to that repository. I will click on it. Now that repo is copied into my account. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this repo. So I'm going to go to code. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open up a terminal. I'm going to make sure that I am navigated to somewhere that I know I can access the repo. I'm going to do a git clone paste whatever I just copied, wait until it's done cloning, and then I will bring that folder that I just cloned right onto my screen. I can move my terminal back. We are going to be going inside the folder that you just cloned, and you are going to find the Docker file, and you are going to remove it. We're going to move it to trash. Now, once you remove it to trash, you're going to go back to your terminal. You're going to do a get status to make sure that you have removed it. But before you do a get status, make sure that you CD into that repo. Now you can do a get status and you see that you just deleted the Docker file, which is good. What we are going to do is we're going to do a git add and you're going to do a git commit and you're going to do a git push. Okay, so that's great. Now you could go back to GitHub and make sure that that Docker file is no longer in that repo, which looks like it is not, which is great. So we are done with that first step. Once you have forked the Umami repo and deleted the Docker file from that repo, we are gonna create an account on Railway. If you already have an account, that's great. You don't have to create it again. In my instance, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna go to my account. I'll do it side by side so we could still follow the instructions. Great. We are going to create a new project. So start new project and we are going to do deploy from repo. And the repo that you want to select is the Umami repo that you just created. So that would be right here. And what you want to do is you want to add some variables. The variables that you want to add, as mentioned here, is you're going to add hash salt. Now, if you read in the instructions, it says that hash salt is just a value to a random string. So what I'm going to do is just want to put a random string in there. The next variable that we are going to add is we're going to add port. So that is P-O-R-T and that's going to be at port 3000. And then the next variable we are going to add is right here, database type. We're going to add that and then it's going to be Postgres. We're going to add that. And the last variable we are going to add is host name. And that's going to be this whole thing right here. Make sure you copy it correctly. No white spaces. And we're going to add that. So once that's done, we can deploy what we just built. And to do that, it's already building it. After you've added your variables correctly, you'll notice that it's failing. And this is because it says the initial deploy will fail until you follow the rest of the steps. So we have to complete the rest of these steps, which is adding a database. So you are going to click on new and you're going to click on database, as it says, and you're going to add a Postgres SQL database. 
Once you do that, it takes a couple seconds, you're adding it. So once we've added our Postgres database, we are gonna redeploy what we had, wait until it finishes building, which we will see right here. Now, once it's done deploying, what you're gonna do next is you are gonna go to settings and you are gonna generate a domain. So what this does, as it mentions right here, is that it exposes this to the public internet. We are gonna rename this to Omami website or something that is more easy to access, right? Umami website, okay. Now, if you wait a few seconds, we're gonna see this showing up. And then from here, we are gonna be able to access the login page for our Umami dashboard. And there we go. If it doesn't show up immediately, just wait a few seconds until it could recognize the public domain. Now we are at this login page. Now the next thing we're gonna do is that we are gonna follow the login step. So we are gonna click on this section right here and it's gonna redirect us to login. Now, if we wanna log in, we have to have a username and password. The default of these passwords is admin. So we're gonna copy and paste it here and umami as the password, Pop, copy and paste it here. If we log in, we are able to access, this is our dashboard. Now, what you want to do is that you, you wanna to go to settings and change that password. So please change your password. You just go to profile, change password, and put whatever password that you wanna use. Then the next thing you want to do is we are gonna start adding websites. I'm gonna make this screen a little bit bigger. We're gonna to go to settings. We're gonna add a website. Now a website would be anything that you're hosting that has a custom domain. I've tried using the generated domain that Vercel gives you after deploying Next.js app, but that doesn't work. Maybe there's a workaround, but I haven't figured it out yet. But for instance, I have a personal website called hostnocostomy.com. The name is, I'm gonna call it Portfolio. I'm gonna save it. Now this is one of the websites that I have. Now this doesn't automatically start tracking your data for your website because it doesn't know, because it doesn't have a tracking code to do so. So if you go back to settings, we're gonna copy this code and it shows you what the code looks like and it tells you to place it on the head of your website. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm now going to show you where I've placed it within my Next.js app. I'm using Next.js 13 and I'm using the app repository. Within the app repository, I have a head. So that is where they tell you to place it wherever you're setting the title for your website. Just make sure to place it in the similar area where all the other scripts are. And once you do that, make sure it's deployed and accessible online. So once you've done that, then that's when your data should start coming in and you'll see the dashboard showing up. So that's it for setting up your dashboard. So I'll show you on my other account some websites that I already have deployed and I'm receiving data from right here. So here's an example of my current Umami page. I have a few websites that are already up. If I wanna see all the data that's coming in, here is my main dashboard page. And if I wanna see any specific website, for instance, I want to click view details. It'll give me more of a description of each page that is visited and etc. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave it in the comment section below. And I hope you got something out of this and are able to now collect your data for your websites that you host. And thank you for watching.